Hi everyone, this video is looking at standard deviation and standard error, which are both ways of looking at the variation within your data. Okay, so if we start with standard deviation, um, as a just sort of a general introduction to what it is, let's imagine that we have um, a class and they've done a test. So here we're going to uh, look at their test score as a percentage against the frequency, so the number of students who got those scores. And in this particular class, when you do that, uh, we find the mean test score is 50%, and if you plot the data, you get uh, a roughly normal distribution that looks like this. Now, if you calculate standard deviation, and we'll look at how you calculate it in a minute, but you end up with a number, and what it shows is the spread from the mean. So if this is the mean in the middle, the standard deviation goes out on either side, and in this case here, the standard deviation is quite small, which means that it doesn't you don't go very far from the mean to get out to where the curve is. And because it's a normal distribution and because of the way that it works, uh, we can say that if you have a small standard deviation, so this distance here is small, that tells you that you have a small spread from the mean. Okay, that's what it means. That's what that's what it refers to. So a small standard deviation means that the data in your data set shows a small spread from the mean. And what that means is that the data is more reliable, as in if you're looking at the mean and you're using the mean to tell you, give you insight into your data, then because all the values are very close to the mean, then your data, the mean you've got, is more reliable in terms of estimating what's going on. If you had another class and you did the same thing, so you plot their test scores, and this time you've got the same mean value, but the test scores are much more spread. So you've got more lower scores and more higher scores compared to the previous class. You might see something that looks like this. So again, we've still got a standard, uh, still got a normal distribution, but you can see that the distance from the mean is greater here than it is here. So again, if you were to calculate the standard deviation, you'd find that you have a large standard deviation and that tells you that we've got a large spread from the mean and therefore your mean is uh, is less reliable in terms of indicating what the data is doing because we've got a lot of data which is much smaller than your mean value and we've got a lot of data which is much larger than the mean value. So standard deviation tells you about the spread of your data from the mean. Okay, so we need to calculate our standard deviation. Um, and to do that, we're going to look at a couple of examples. We're going to use an example to help us. So let's imagine we've got a farmer, and it's a carrot farmer. And so she has, uh, she's got some carrots she wants to plant, and she wants to maximize her yield. So there are two fertilizers, and she wants to compare which one gives better results um, in terms of the length of carrots that she grows. So one field she puts miracle Grow on, and the other field she puts grow more. So we've got two different fertilizers. So she adds the fertilizers and she lets the carrots grow. There we go. And then once they've grown, she digs up a carrot from Miracle Grow, has a look at it, measures the length, and digs up a carrot from Grow More and measures the length. Um, and she can see that the carrot in Miracle Grow is bigger than the one in Grow More, but of course she knows that that is not necessarily representative of all of the carrots in each field and so she needs to take a bigger sample. So she takes eight carrots as her sample from the miracle Grow field, measures the length of all of them, takes the mean, and finds they have a mean length of eight centimetres. And then she does the same thing with Grow More. She takes eight carrots as her sample and finds a mean length of 6.5 centimetres. So again, it looks as if, so we've got a larger mean in uh, miracle Grow compared to our Grow More, but um, we know that just looking at the mean might not be representative of the data. So uh, she wants to calculate the standard deviation so she can see the spread of her data from the mean. So to do this, you have to look at all the data. Let's put it all out there. And then you can see the means that we've calculated here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to calculate, we're going to run through the calculations for miracle Grow only so you can see how it works. Now you do not need to remember the equations for calculating standard deviation. 
you just need to know how to use them. So first of all, um, the mean for miracle grow is eight. And here, when it says this, this symbol here means X bar. So you say X bar, that means the mean. And it's X bar one because it's talking about this first data set here. So we're only talking about miracle grow. And then again, there's X bar. Again, that means the mean. So the first thing you have to do is you have to take each data set in turn or data point, sorry. So first of all, if we take five, so the first data point is five, we take five and then we have to do five minus the mean. So the mean is eight. So five minus eight gives you minus three. And then you have to take five minus eight, which is minus three, and we have to square it. So that gives us nine. And then you do it with the same, the next data point. So the next data point is nine. Nine minus eight gives you one, and one squared gives you one. So we do that for every single data point in our miracle grow sample. And we come up with this, which is the sum. This symbol means sum. So if you add all of these together, the sum of x minus x bar squared equals 34. And then we get the equation for s. s is standard deviation. So standard deviation is the square root of the sum of x minus x bar squared divided by m minus 1. So again, there's our sum of x minus x bar squared, which is that value there. So that is 34. n is 1, so m minus 1 is 7, which gives us a standard deviation of 2.20. That's the calculation for the standard deviation for miracle grow. What we could then do is we could do the same thing using grow more, and then we could compare the standard deviations to compare the spread of data around the mean for both types of fertilizer. And if we do that, we find that miracle grow has a standard deviation of 2.20, and grow more has a, a standard deviation of 1.80. So in terms of what we can say, we can say that miracle grow has a larger spread around the mean. So larger standard deviation means a larger spread around the mean. But on its own, that is, um, it kind of gives a little bit of insight into the data, but it isn't, um, it's not very rigorous. It doesn't give us any sort of statistical analysis. So what we would have to do with that, um, if we wanted to find out more, we'd have to do further analysis and we'd have to look at standard error or we might have to look at the t-test. So we're going to look at standard error next. Oh, sorry, also, yes, yeah, sorry. Because there's a larger spread, it means that the data, the mean is less reliable. So the mean for miracle Grow is a less reliable indicator f of, the, uh, of the rest of the samples compared to Grow More. Okay, so I mentioned just now standard error. Um, we're going to take our same example. So we've got our miracle Grow and our Grow More. Um, now, standard error is something you have to calculate using your standard deviation. Um, what it means is, is about thinking about the mean and whether the mean you calculate is representative of the true mean. So we know that um, our farmer took a sample from each field. And we know that to start with, she took a sample of eight carrots to calculate her mean. So the means that were calculated were 8 centimetres and 6.5 centimetres. Standard error is about saying this mean that we calculate here, is that representative of our whole sample? Because let's say that we didn't take those 8 carrots. Okay, let's say that instead of those 8 carrots, we took um, a different 8 carrots. Would we still have got 8 centimetres as our mean? Probably not, because of the variation that you have in living things. If we'd taken a different eight carrots from bro grow more, would we have got a mean of 6.5 centimetres? Probably not. So each sample that you take is always is probably going to give a slightly different mean. But the question is, if in fact you took all of the carrots there, so you measured the length of every single carrot in the whole population, and then you did the same for grow more, that would tell you the true mean. So if you did that and you counted the length of every single carrot in the population, you would find that the mean for miracle Grow is 7.9 centimetres. That's the true mean. 
and that's different from the mean that was calculated with our sample, which was 8 centimetres. Same for Gromor, when you calculate the mean from every single carrot, we get a mean of 7.4 centimetres, but the mean from our sample was only 6.5. Now you don't normally do that, you will very rarely actually calculate the true mean, because normally there would just be too many, uh, too many individuals to count, um, so uh, that's why we sample. So standard error is about comparing the mean that we calculate from a sample and using that to work out if we think it is representative of the true mean, even though we don't know what the true mean is. So to calculate the standard error, we use this equation here. And again, you don't need to remember this. SM is standard error, S is our standard deviation, and N is our sample size. So for miracle Grow, we know that the standard deviation is 2.20, N equals 8. Therefore, we do this calculation here, and we end up with a standard error of 0 0.78. OK, so what does that mean? It's a way of saying how certain we are that the mean is what it should be. So what you can see here is that when you calculate your standard error, we can then say that we are 95% certain that if we took a different mean, so if instead of the eight samples we took, if we took a different eight carrots from our population, we're 95% sure that the mean we would calculate in that second instance would be plus or minus two standard errors from the mean we originally calculated. So in this example here, we're saying that we're 95% certain that another ta mean taken from the miracle growth field is plus or minus two lots of 0 0.78 or plus or minus 1.56 centimetres from the mean. So if we show this on a graph, it can be easier to understand. So if we take our length here, and we're going to just plot the mean for miracle Grow, and there it is. And what we've got here, this is our error bar. Now you can um, draw error bars in different ways. This is an error bar drawn using our 95% confidence interval which is what we mean when we say two standard errors. So this is our mean. So the mean that we calculated originally for miracle Grow was eight centimeters. That represents two standard errors above the mean. So 1.56 centimeters above the mean gets you to this point here. And this represents minus two standard errors. So this point here is minus 1.56 centimeters so below the mean. So our standard error is measuring the reliability of the mean. So we're saying that we're 95% confident that even though we've only taken a sample, we think that the true mean is within this range. And the smaller the range is, the more reliable the mean is that we have calculated because the smaller the range is, we're saying we're 95% sure that the mean we calculated is within this range. So a smaller range means our data is more reliable. So I just mentioned error bars. I want to look at those in a bit more detail now. So if we calculated our standard error for miracle Grow as 0 0.78, um, if we did the same thing, so we calculated for Grow More, and we, got, we would get a standard error of 0 0.63. So then what we could do is we could compare those two results. So here are our error bars for miracle Grow, which we just looked at. And then if we plot for Grow More, our original mean for our sample was 6.5. And so if we put our error bars, so two standard errors above and two standard errors below, then it looks like this. Now, let me just go back a little bit. So what we're looking for is whether the error bars overlap. So that's what these red lines are. We can see that this error bar here overlaps with our range for our possible uh, placement of our true mean on Grow More. And then again, the top range here overlaps with our error bar. So we've got this area here where there is overlap uh, between the our uh, our possible range of mean values. Now, what does that mean? 
if there is an overlap, then it's telling you the difference between the means of the two sets of data is not significant. What that means is, even though we've calculated our mean here as eight centimeters, our standard error tells us that it could actually be anywhere within this range because we're 95% sure the true mean falls within plus or minus two standard errors. And the same here. We calculated our mean here, but actually it could be anywhere within this range. So it's possible that the mean for miracle Grow is actually somewhere here and the mean for Grow More is somewhere here. So they could be the same. So we can't be confident, we can't be sure that the means are different and we definitely can't be sure that miracle Grow is bigger than Grow More. It's not significant. Now, error bars can tell us something different as well. So let's just assume that actually when we did our calculations, let's say our data was totally different. And in fact, our data, when we calculated it out, we had these as our standard errors. So if I just get rid of all of that and then I plot my error bars again to represent our new standard errors. So again, we're just imagining a different data set. Then in this instance, you can see that there is no overlap. The bottom range for this error bar does not overlap with our error bar range here. So in this instance, there is no overlap between our error bars. Now that tells us that we have to do a t-test. So it's telling us that it is possible that there is a significant difference between the mean of miracle Grow and the mean of Grow More. It's possible. But we don't know that unless we do a statistical test. So if there is an overlap in our error bars, we can say that there is no significant difference. If there isn't an overlap, then it's possible that there is a significant difference, but we need to do a t-test to check. One final thing then uh, about reliability. We can also use error bars in data if you have uh, a line graph. So let's say that we looked at the mean length of uh, carrot, but we put different masses of fertilizer on. So let's say we just use miracle Grow, different masses of fertilizer, and we had these results here, which is the mean value at 5, 10, and 15 grams of fertilizer added. If you also calculated your standard error and you got your error bars, um, then we could put those on as well. But without the error bars, this is the conclusion. This is the conclusion that you would make. So you'd look at this data and you think, oh yeah, as we increase in mass, we increase in mean length. The question is, if that's our conclusion, is that conclusion reliable? Is the data actually supporting this conclusion or not? And to know that, we can look at our error bars. So if we put the error bars on, and remember these are error bars calculated by the standard error, so the bars are different lengths for each data set, and then we look for overlap. And we can see that there is overlap between the mass, uh, uh, the mean for mass at five and 10, and there's also overlap between 10 and 15, and there's also overlap between five and 15. So as a result of that, because the error bars overlap, then the conclusion isn't supported by the data. We could also compare the reliability um, between our data points. So because our error bars for this data point at 15 grams of fertilizer, the, this is, uh, has a bigger range compared to, let's say, this one, we could say that this data point is less reliable than this one. And in fact, 15 grams is the least reliable data point out of any of them because the error bars are further apart. Okay, there's a lot of information there. Hope that's okay. Um, we will go from here to then look at how we use our standard deviation to calculate t-tests and what that means.